podcast, where each week we talk about a free piece or two of technology that you can use in your classroom. I'm your host, Shannon Martin. I'm a middle school teacher, instructional and technology coach for my district. And I'm her husband and producer, Fuzz Martin, and there's no place on earth I'd rather be. Oh, so clever. (laughs) I'm so So good at this. It's like playing on easy mode. (laughs) (laughs) So, we are on episode 98. Yes, 98. 98 is great. It is great. And... Don't be late. For episode 98. It's a date. It's only 98 degrees outside. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I'd quote a 98 degrees song, but I'd get it mixed up with a Backstreet Boys or One Direction or... (laughs) <laughs> One Direction's from like 2015. It's similar. But you know what I but mean. But not. But it could. If we're going to talk about like degrees of latitude and longitude, we would totally be on track for today's topic. That's right. Because today we're talking about Google Earth. Meow. So what we, I, never realized is that I haven't talked about Google Earth. We talked about Google Tour Builder a little bit that is no longer in existence. And Tier. I've talked about a few other Google tools, but I use Google Earth all the time. And I feel like maybe it's just like one of those in my toolkit, like checking my Gmail, that I have never talked about it. It's so familiar that you just expect that you had talked about it. Yeah. When like you really I, had. I assumed that it was already spoken of. So when I was digging through and I was like, hey, I'm using Google Earth this week. And then I was like, I've never actually talked about all the ways I use Google Earth. And then I was supporting sixth grade teacher this week. And she was like, oh, hey, I want to do this with my sixth graders. Do you have an idea? And I said, yes, you can do this in Google Earth. And she's like, okay. So then we started gathering all the ideas of Google Earth. And here we are, episode 98. And we're talking about Google Earth. And we're talking about Google Earth, everybody. Welcome. Better late than never. Google Earth. Earth.google.com or type in Google Earth or Earth and Google will probably send you to Google Earth. Or look outside and wave and the satellite will pick you up. Also true. All of these things. So there's a lot of awesome things about Google Earth that they have improved over time. So if it's been a while since you've looked at Google Earth or you just use it to look at cool things, you can absolutely just troll around Google Earth and look at cool stuff. But it's a really great tool to incorporate into your classroom. And I think that's the biggest piece where like Google Earth is fun, but also there's all kinds of lessons that you can build around it or just engage students with in all content areas. So besides social studies, which is super easy, science and math and reading and all of that good stuff. So shall we walk through the website? Yes. Let's walk through Google Earth. Take it. Let's put on our Earth moon. to Google. I was going to say, let's put on our moon boots, but that doesn't really work. Mm. No, because we're on Earth and we have gravity. Right. Gravity so we don't need shoes. moon boots unless it's snowing. Also true. <laughs> In Google Earth, you have choices. It'll connect automatically with your Google account, whichever one you have open at the time, which is kind of nice if you want it to. It's all there. And that's in the little hamburger. You can access your account right there. But I'm going to start backwards because that's more fun. So the first one, if we're doing math, math and Google Earth, you can measure the distance of an area. Okay. So it gives you a little ruler and you click on it and you can find your starting point. So zoom on into Earth All right. as far as your eye can see. Zoom on in with the good oh, old satellites and zoom and zoom and zoom and click on a, de- a like destination. And then if you watch, you're going to get... A line, like a line segment. Yep. And then you drop it again, and it'll tell you the distance of a place. So I'm in Africa currently, and I went 37.4 kilometers. And then I can keep connecting, and I can make a triangle if I want to. Yeah. And connect your lines together. You can make all sorts of polygons here. Yeah. Isn't that cool? And so you can go through and figure out the distance of several areas It's great for distance practice and math, but also understanding like the area when it comes to, I've seen it used in agriculture class, like when we're doing farming and figuring out fields and distance around farm fields, but you can also figure distance from city to city and 
like you said, all different types of polygons. You can make a math class, and then it will give you, you can zoom in and it'll shade the different areas. You can see the full area, so you can see the perimeter and then it's placed, and then you can see the area of a place, which is really cool. And some of these things before you can do in Google Maps, but this gives you like a better view and there's more options just because you can, it's like Google Maps and then fancified with Google Earth. Okay, it's so really I, a cool I, thing to do. I just outlined Wisconsin mm -hmm. with a polygon. Now, where do I see the the actual area? You should have a box in the right-hand side of your screen Yep. that then shows you the perimeter and the area measured for you. Okay, mine's not showing that to me. If you click on it, it'll show up. Uh, it says... Connect them and then click on it. It says Wisconsin Untitled Project. So I must have done it wrong. It's okay. It takes a little practice. So yeah, click on an area, make a polygon, okay. connect the points. When you connect the points yep. is when it gives you the area. Okay, gotcha. Does that make sense? So you have to connect all of the points yep. and make the area. Connect your last point. Oh, your there we point. go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I see what I did is I went a step further and saved it. And then it, um, so I just outlined Nebraska <laughs> and now I know. Yep. And then you can like click. So you'll get like little dots along the way and you can stretch them out and make different types of polygons and then figure out your perimeter and your area as well, which is pretty cool. By the way, Nebraska, uh, if in case you wanted to know, it's approximately 74,000 square miles. Nice. Thank you for sharing. Look, You're very welcome. Something new you learned today in Google Earth. Yes. So again, great for math, great for shapes, and kind of a fun way to do math that students don't always do when they're figuring out like perimeter and area and stuff. And you can play around with it, and they can play around with it, and zoom in and do 3D. And then you can like 3D your polygon while Earth spins, which is kind oh, of fun. Yeah. yeah, it gets a little trippy in Google Earth. So That's you can fun. like cruise around and like zoom in and zoom out then on the area that you've designated. Sure. Yeah. That's really neat. Fun. Good so now job, while you're Google. playing with that, I'm going to continue to the next thing. And then that's you can fine. play with that I'll tool. Play with the next thing. Too. All right. So that's measuring. The next thing you have is map style. So again, I'm working from my bottom, like left hand side toolbar from okay. the bottom up is where I am right now. So we did measuring. And then if you click on the next, it looks like a little square with a layer underneath. Yeah. You can figure out your map styles. So do you want a clean map with no borders, labels, or places? Exploration, that's where there's some labels and roads and you can kind of cruise around everything. If you click on that, it gives you everything on your map. Oh, yeah. So like landmarks, water, roads, transit, everything you could possibly need gets loaded in. Which the kids are like, that's so cool. And then you ask them to find something and it gets a little overwhelming. Sure. So that one I usually don't use very often unless there's like specific small areas that we're talking about because then they really need the details. And then there's custom where you can choose your own map, like how you set it up. So if there's a specific thing you're doing for a project, you can have kids set it up in a certain way. If you choose everything. Yeah. And you scroll all the way to the bottom under layers. Mm-hmm. You can turn on animated clouds, mm -hmm. and it shows you the last 24 hours of cloud coverage in a looping animation. Sweet. Science. Yes. Climate. Boom. Oh, like imagine, okay, imagine you have a class full of kids, and you want to talk about a hurricane or a tropical storm or yeah. something. You can easily zoom in and show them in an animated loop of where the hurricane came through or whatever that might be. There you go. And, I mean, our science teacher covers that all the time. They talk about weather patterns. ta -da! That's awesome. Is that fun? Yeah. So, yeah, so the layering of maps, you have lots of choices. And then, yes, yeah, so you can turn on your animated clouds as they're cruising through and grid lines on or off, which will show us our latitude, longitude. You can find your 98 degrees. Hey, hey. 98th degree. <laughs> This is true. And so I like to turn on the grid lines, especially because we're always talking about latitude, longitude. And oh, yeah. My kids get confused sometimes. And so by putting those on there, then they are interacting with a, like a globe type mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. map. And that's kind of nice in social studies class because they're like, oh, yeah. And then if you're going to track weather patterns or those clouds, you can actually have them check them within their lines of latitude and longitude, which is kind of cool. Very cool. So... 
everything, gives you all kinds of choices as well. And that's in the layering of the maps. So you can have a lot of different things that the kids are working with with apps, which is awesome. All right. I'm going back to clean. All right. Clean mode. Next. So working our way up from the bottom is the tool I use all of the time. <laughs> so it is called Make a New Project. So this is where our good friend Google Tour Builder that went away has a new home. But it's it's fancier. So when you go to create or open, you can open up your project. It saves them to Google Drive, which is fantastic. And it's going to, it combines Google Slides with Google Earth at the same time, like Tour Builder did. But there's just more options. So I have my students title their projects and then write their little short description of what they're going to do. And then each feature you add, so you click add a feature. What's cool is you can find a place on your map. You can search and add the place, or you can just click on it. But then also you can pull up, there's also guided tours as well that Google has pre-done. Mm -hmm. So you can take virtual field trips this way too. But I'm going to go with, I'm having my students create it. So they're going to go to new feature. We're going to add it. We're going to add a place mark. And then... You can either drop it or you can search for it. You add your title, add it to the project, and then save. And then what's cool about this is if it's a place that already exists within searching, it'll give you a short description. But you just hit the little edit pencil, and then my students are the ones who write the description of the place. So you can use either Google's descriptions of a place or have students write their own description or whatever they're using it for. So if they're going to use it as like a timeline mm -hmm. within history, they could write like what happened in those places through the years. If you're going to use it as a storyboard, you can have the story written in each of those place marks, maybe as your character is traveling around. I've talked about this before when it was Tour Builder, where our college and career readiness teacher uses it as a college tour. And they use the tours and they drop place marks around college. So that's what they used to do with Tour Builder. But you can definitely do that with Google Earth. Like they're the same entity. They work the same way. Sure. So you can drag and drop place marks anywhere. The latest ones my students did, we do a quick review of things around Wisconsin. And so they had to create a fictional themed field trip around Wisconsin hmm. and give me descriptions of places or important things that they found interesting because it's kind of like a way for me to get to know my students and talk about Wisconsin. Some of that, like I had some zoo tours. I had some ice cream tours. I had some cheese factory tours. <laughs> I had water park tours. And so the students created their own tours around Wisconsin. What I was talking about with our sixth grade teacher is they are going to take ancient they learn about like ancient China and they learn about ancient Greece and Egypt and things like that. And so they're going to connect modern day places with what happened in the past, which I thought was kind of cool. And they're going to set up Google tours that way. So create a tour, create your project, and then you will tour that place in your project. And it takes you around from place to place and zooms in. And then the kids' descriptions come up. They can add their own images to them and they can load in their own information. And then what's great is that it saves to their Google Drive so they can't lose their project and be like, I don't know where it is sure. because it's in Google. So that's pretty sweet. So creating projects, fantastic for that. Scrolling up, you look like you're going to say something. No, no, I'll wait till profound. you get to this part because it's right. so, so cool. So cool. The I'm feeling lucky part? Yeah. Yeah. You want to talk about it? Because clearly you're playing in it. So if you click on the, the die mm -hmm. and it will roll the dice, that's called I'm feeling lucky, Yep. and drop you in some place in the globe. Mm -hmm. And then it gives you a little bit of a description of that place. Mm -hmm. So currently I'm in Grand Harbor in the island of Malta and it's in 3d mm -hmm. and it is so cool. Cause you can see all like the bridges and the buildings and the topography and like just the shadows move and all it's so cool. Did you click on the little fly here button? I or don't no? know. If I so did. like if you pull up a description and I'm feeling lucky and they have the description and the place and it drops you there. Okay. You then can click this. It looks like a little paper airplane. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then from there, it kind of flies you around to different parts of oh, the area. Okay. okay. That's and cool. And it twirls you around a bit and then I kind think of highlights if, different yeah, if you parts have, of it. 
different places in a project will fly mm -hmm. you from one to the next. The yes. Next, yeah. Right. So like when you have a student project, it goes from one place to the next. Yeah. So now I'm in uh, Maguro Fedosin. It's a great way to just randomly learn about parts of the world that you would yeah. never know. I'm at, I'm at a temple. Cool. In Japan. Nice. And it's awesome. Yay. Neat. All right. So while you're putts in there, I'm going to move, keep on moving <laughs> up the list here. Fine. So Voyager is the next thing I use a lot in the classroom, which you'll probably enjoy here if you click up to the little ship's wheel. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I've got a little otter sleeping yeah, on its Yeah, the return of the sea otter. They're so cute. So Voyager uses all of the things. So like if you pick a category and you just click on those otters, you otter know. It <laughs> takes you to... You, you, you otter know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It takes you to Monterey Bay Aquarium. So what Google Voyager does when you are in Voyager, mm -hmm. it gives you tours of all kinds of places around the world, and they're pre-set up. So I'm trying to click on here as I am so distracted by these otters because they're so cute. Otters are possum. It says it's got puns. I think I'm in love. <laughs> So they have nature tours. If you scroll down once you're in Voyager, mm -hmm. you can see like the changing forests. They'll do time lapse of Google Earth through like wildfires. Okay. Which is awesome again for like science class. And it'll talk about different types of farming or like they'll talk about forests in Bolivia. Here is this one. And what's cool is the time lapse literally goes through year by year with the same image. Like it's taken from the same spot and you can see the change of the land over time. And this one's from 1985 to present day. And it shows you all of the different things that have happened within this piece of land in the world. And so they have time lapse of Google. So they're different sets of time lapse depending on they have sources of energy, they have urban expansion warming planet safeguards mm -hmm. for parks so there's all kinds of cool time lapse that kids can see like this is before some of their lifetime and how much change has happened from like a bird's eye view of earth which yeah. is really cool and they have google street view for mars on earth so you can literally click on it and then have street view on mars oh wow that's yeah. cool and yeah. then you can visit Yellowstone. So like when I do national parks with my students, it's so cool because these voyagers are in there. These like tours, they're almost like virtual field trips where you can take your students and they can go visit different places. Like one of these is rock climbing destinations. So you can go check out different places to rock climb. There's just so many different options. You start scrolling through and it's super interesting. So there's times where my kids are like, hey, like I finished my project and I was like, go into Voyager. And then I hear, come here, look at this. Come yep. here, look at this. Because, <laughs> and they're showing all their classmates, like, look at all these cool things. Because they're places they never would have explored or thought about. And it's just there. And you get to tour it. Also in Voyager then. So there's kind of like a little like choice bar. These games are, they have like animal calls and archaeological sites and music instruments. And so there's fun little quiz games. And we used to use GeoGuessr a lot, but mm -hmm. my kids have, there's a lot more paid things with GeoGuessr. It's not as free, user-friendly anymore. Sure. So they started playing in Voyager, and it's just like fun trivia in different parts of the world, guessing the origin of foods and global national parks and testing your knowledge on different things. So there's a lot of fun gaming options or like quizzing options. And then you have layers. So from here, you can check out like satellite imagery, Versus time lapse of Google Earth versus 3D imagery. They've got like glacier coverage and what's happened. So there's a lot of different options. And we talked about weather before, current hurricanes and tropical storms. And you can go through and see the paths of where they're coming and going from. Street view, they have a bunch of highlights from cool street view points. Culture, it would connect to like Google Arts and culture. Mm -hmm. Travel, same. And then education, there's all kinds of then engineering things. So like triangular structures and geometry of sustainable architecture and underground railroad and so many things that Voyager offers for education. It's not, it's so cool to see all these things, but also as a teacher, you could incorporate these into any one of your classes. Yeah. And there would be some cool tour or something for the kids that they can interact with, which is really fun. Love it. Yeah. So Google Earth has definitely from 
from back in the day when it was just this cool satellite like thing. Like spinning globe. Yeah. Um, has definitely upped its game. And for an educator, it's kind of like one of those tools to have in your back pocket because there's just always cool new things and they're always changing. So there's a lot to offer your students. So if you fly into a building, you zoom in close to a, like a public building or mm -hmm. even some companies mm -hmm. and you drag the little guy from the corner it will give you a bunch of dots and you can drop them on there. So as you know, but the listeners don't, my dad before, uh, <laughs> before, right before COVID bought a resort in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Well, I just wanted to see what the property looked like. <laughs> so I zoomed in and then I clicked on the little guy and I was actually able to take a tour of the resort. Mm-hmm. Not all of them are set up that way, but yes, yeah. a lot of places you can tour the actual building if they, you can drop it inside. Right. But I'm guessing like, let's go to like Smithsonian and now that's, you can find that through the Voyager too, mm -hmm. but let's go to the National Air and Space Museum. Hang on. I'm taking a little trip from Puerto Rico <laughs> down to the Air and Space Museum. All right. There we go. I found it. I'm going to take my little guy and yeah, you can go. I'm... In the Smithsonian? I am in the Smithsonian right now. I am I am next to an escalator, <laughs> and this is the coolest thing ever. I'm looking at exhibits. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at some old <laughs> Dunkirk uh, war outfits nice. in, in the Air and Space Museum. Cool. That's super cool. So now in your free time, uh, you're going to be like, hey, everybody at work, we're going to take a 10-minute break. Go take a mental tour or take a mental break and go take a tour around the world. I really wish I would have known about this at the beginning of COVID <laughs> when we were all stuck in the house and needed to go somewhere. Mm, yeah. We could have toured everywhere. Well, and we, yeah. Hey, kids, we're going to the water park today. <laughs> Get under we, did, we did do tours through Disney, remember? There was oh, a, yeah, yeah. We did do that back right. in the that's start right. of COVID. We did virtual tours. That's right. That's right. Oh, and we also, while exploring... Uh, schools for our oldest child, uh, we looked at what the bathrooms looked like yes. in, in one of the colleges. Yes. Yes, we have. <laughs> so, yeah, good call. So, yeah. So, Google Earth, there is so many things that it has to offer, and there's so many ways to build it into your classroom. If you haven't explored it in a while, do so. And if you do use it regularly, it's always updating. So, there's always things to come back to and tie into your classroom, which is pretty awesome. So, yeah, it's been fun. Thanks for touring with me today. Love it. Thanks for tuning in. This has been the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast. If you ever have any questions, you can find me on Twitter at SmartNWI. And if you want to get more information on the links to the technology discussed in this episode, you can visit SmartNWI.com or find me on Facebook. New episodes each week. Thanks for listening. Go educate and innovate. The ideas and opinions expressed on this podcast and the Smart NWI website are those of the author, Shanna Martin, and not of her employer. Prior to using any of the technologies discussed in this podcast, please consult with your employer regulations. This podcast offers no guarantee that these tools will work for you as described, but we sure hope they do. Music